Every sewer needs an entrance and an exit, and that's what we're doing this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week is our fourth video in our sewer series, and we're building this entrance and exit for our sewer. We're giving our players two ways to get in and out of the sewer, one through this monster pipe, and another one through this metal door. Now, if the metal door and the red light aren't your thing, I've got videos in my library that'll show you how to make torches and medieval style doors. Check those out at the end of the video. I also have in the description below a link to where you can get and download the plans for this build and follow along that's going to make it quite a bit easier. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some materials and let's get crafting. So we start by grabbing the plans. Uh, the link will be in the description below as to where you can grab those and cut these out uh, following the dotted line like a lot of the previous builds in the sewer series. Cut the foam out and either put some uh, dollar store foam core around the perimeter of that, or we're gonna line it with DOS clay. The base for this uh, video here, I'm lining in XPS foam, and the back wall will be lined in clay. Tracing the base out here for the uh, canal, it's gonna be two different uh, dimensions on both sides as you can see that was a wider uh, opening that's going to go up against the back wall and the smaller opening will match the rest of our sewer tiles from the sewer series video now this portion of the stencil is going to allow us to cut out the um, proper size of the canal with the uh, exacto knife here in just a few minutes so trace that out onto the foam, lining up um, both curved sections. Just flip that section of the stencil over. Uh, you don't have to bother cutting both sides of it out. Now you've seen this technique before. Basically cutting this out with an X-Acto knife to make the ends uh, look pretty uh, decent. It's only the first three quarters of an inch down and the ends that you have to worry about being nice and straight. The remaining of this, we're going to pretty much hack it up with uh, an Ulfa knife, as you can see here, and just rip those sections right out. You're never going to see those. Again, you've seen this in the previous video. All we got to do is go down about three quarters of an inch and give it a, uh, a stone pattern. Now we're going to cut out the walking surface for the miniatures. So as you can see, this is now the, uh, the wider um, portion of that stencil. Trace it out onto some XPS or actually some dollar store foam core and you'd be all set. We're going to glue that, texture it, uh, and put it right in place right on top of the base there. So if you use a grid, obviously follow this step right here. If you don't, just skip over this step. I'll put a link above as to how you can make this foam roller. And like I mentioned in the previous video, I like to do that a little bit of an angle, just makes it a little bit more interesting. And again, the side wall will be uh, parallel to the ground. Now we want to measure the back wall of this piece. And you can see it's not as wide as the tile. It's because we need to leave that width for the coating of the clay that's going to go around the back wall. Now this measurement is just to make sure we don't place the sewer pipe um, any lower than it has to be and I ended up um, placing this a little too high actually you want to get this pretty low as you can as low as possible that way you have more of the sewer pipe under the, um, the sewer sludge uh, when you're done with the build so I started ripping this out um, the same way that I've been taking out all of the XPS foam um, in the canal. And then I realized I'm working a lot harder than I need to be. We're coating this whole thing in clay. So I just tossed this onto the circle cutter 
and really I'm just cutting that circle out and then cutting the whole chunk out um, and tossing it and just keeping that back section uh, for the wall on the back edge of the, the sewer. So a little bit of hot glue will seal that right up. Again, you're never going to see it and um, nice and easy. If you got the circle cutter, definitely use it here. If not, um, you're going to be have to resort to cutting it out yourself uh, by hand. Now here I'm just using a, uh, a coping saw and um, just cutting out a little piece of pipe here for our exit. And this is going to be the wider section of the end of the pipe. I'm going to refrain from using the American term for it because I got a lot of flack from all my viewers over in the UK as to what we call this, but um, this will just be the wider um, female end of the, of the pipe. So this is just gouging out. I'm using a, a hot wire knife here. Um, just pretty much making this little groove so that we can fit the cardboard uh, tube uh, into that end of the pipe. Here we take some copper wire and these are going to be the bars for the uh, opening of our pipe. And I wanted to give a second option. Um, if you saw in the uh, picture for the video, there's going to be a door to the exit, but I figured why not have the opening to this pipe um, make it look like something busted out or came through as well to give your players a second option uh, as to how they want to get out of the sewer. You can continue your adventure um, through this tunnel here or uh, you can have them you know, obviously take the door um, up above. So I'm just measuring the width here. I gotta cut that back piece off because that dimension on the paper is the full width of this for the build. I wanna shave those two sections off again because we're coating this in clay, which will make up that thickness. Okay, so this piece is gonna seem a little flimsy can see just how thin we have to cut it here but once we're done um, it's gonna be really sturdy in there it doesn't seem like it's gonna be but it will be so we're gonna use a whole bunch of um, skewers to hold this in place I pre tapped all those holes add a little bit of glue stick them in there and then just cut them to fit and stick that in place and it'll hold up nice and strong and again you're gonna coat this in clay so we'll be all set now for the color scheme for this pipe, it's going to be the same as the sewer wall pipe. I'll put a link above to that video. I'm using the same colors here. And obviously coated the bars in uh, that same metallic color. And we're going to rust all this up, so don't worry about it looking brand new at the moment. So I was planning ahead here because we're going to have uh, the door in this location, so I figured I'd just give it a base coat of a metallic color. And now we're going to make some rust for uh, all the metal in this build. This is a really good mixture. That's a black red by Vallejo. Some airbrush thinner and that pigment that you saw earlier. And you only need a little bit of that black red. This is excellent for uh, rusting up anything, um, all this metal stuff. Coat it on there pretty heavy. And I can't wait to show this to you. Once you get this on there, we're going to take some of that pigment here in just a second and drop it right onto the wet rust wash that we just put on there. So drop it right on just like that. Leave it there. Let it do its thing. It's going to really look like the rust is popping out on this and it looks so realistic. Um, it's, it's awesome. This is definitely how I'm going to be doing all my rust effects uh, from here on out. Just another example here from the side. And don't be afraid to, to really put that rust wash on there. Because that's what's really going to sell this. And it needs quite a bit of it um, for the pigment to soak up and, and adhere to.
So this is my brand new pasta maker. Uh, when this showed up in the mail a few days ago, my wife was all excited. She thought we were making pasta and she found I just spent more money on crafting and well, that went over okay, I guess, for as good as it could. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, just uh, running the clay right through the pasta maker, using our texture roller here to put that texture right onto the clay it was real nice. It was a nice uniform thickness, so um, I'm definitely glad I picked that up. So we just add a little bit of tacky glue and cutting the edges again, real, real satisfying, cuts super easy. And obviously cut down towards the foam. Don't cut up because it'll lift up off the, the foam there. So this was um, obviously a limiting factor, right? How wide we can get the, uh, the clay here, obviously because it's going through the roller now. But it's not an issue. Um, just cut some straight edges there, press them into place, wet it up a little bit, and then hit it with this uh, acrylic roller here. In just a second, you'll see it. And um, you don't notice a difference. And it doesn't really matter. If, uh, if it's not perfectly flat, because we're talking about bricks, you know? Um, if it's a little uneven, I, to me, it just looks a little bit better anyway. Hit this up with some aluminum foil to add some texture. And you can see that rocking motion that I'm doing there with the roller. I find that really helps from keeping it stick. Um, and then rolling it back just to do the other end there. And this is just to make it easier when I'm working with it, instead of having all this excess clay, just kind of semi-cut it to fit there um, before you go ahead and add it on. And you can see how awesome this is. It's just, it goes on just like a blanket. Um, it really holds together well. As long as you don't press too hard when you're rolling it to actually cut individual bricks out of the clay, um, it really can handle, um, you know, working with this stuff without it falling apart. Now, obviously, all these edges, we're going to have to um, meld together here in just a minute. Um, all I'm using is a stencil here just to mark out where the door is going to go. All right, now all we're using is this clay sculpting tool to blend together all of the uh, bricks on all the corners. And just keep it wet and it will help it to really um, blend together nicely. And don't be afraid to really push in and gouge in towards those grout lines. And keeping that tool you know, damp um, really is the key here um, to making this work for you. All right, so this is the part of the stencil here that we're going to use to mark out the uh, railing that's going to go on top of the, uh, the catwalk here. And this is just to kind of give you an idea of where that's going to go. You can obviously adjust it a little bit if you have to. This is to mark out where we're going to put the light here in just a few minutes. Now I'll put a link above to my torch video. It's exactly, um, I'm using the method here that I use in that torch video to power this light up. Instead of using a torch though, we're just gonna run the straight diode with a, uh, a more modern um, covering. Now we're gonna go with a metal uh, bar here or rungs for a ladder going up. So we're just gonna pre-tap those holes while the clay is still uh, soft. And now we're gonna add some skewers to hold and help secure the base to the wall. Um, you wanna really make sure when you do this now that once uh, you go and attach the bottom of the sewer to the back wall, that you add plenty of hot glue here. Because if you don't, when you go to pour that resin, it's gonna leak out and cause a nightmare. Um, I had set this up and went to go watch a portion of the Witcher and left it because I thought I was good to go and it leaked and uh, yeah it caused the problem on my wife's uh, buffet table so um, plenty of glue and you're all set. And these are some copper um, pieces of wire that I bent, painted and stuck right into place for the ladder.
All right. So now this is our covering for the light. I'm just gonna bend some, I think this is 20 gauge wire. And we're gonna put this right onto the washers, the same washers that we use when we make our um, torches in the torch video. And this is gonna be more of like a modern covering that you'd see over like a light bulb, um, just to kind of protect it from, you know, something big hitting it and breaking. So once that's uh, put together there, we use super glue and accelerant to hold that in place. Uh, we're just gonna prime it black. And here we're gonna add some plating to the metal door. Now you can see those rips and tears from when I put the skewers in. And at first I didn't like it, but you can actually see the skewers behind that real close up. And it looks like the pistons that would hold this door together, um, like a bank vault. It looks really cool. So um, I left those in there. So just draw on your metal plating and a whole bunch of little, you know, rivet holes or nail holes in that. And obviously if you want a more, you know, uh, medieval look, just put a wooden door here. Instead of using the red LED, just go ahead and put a torch in there. Now these little cogs I got uh, online, again, there'll be a link in the description below as to where you can get these. And typically I paint all this stuff, but I really liked the bronze antique color of these cogs. So I just put them in uh, right on top of the door and just left them as is. You know, why make things harder for yourself, right? So I grab this pin vise and I'm just going to tap a little hole right into the clay for a little uh, knob here that's going to uh, be used to, you know, open up this door. And all I'm doing here is using some glue, just gluing that washer right over the hole for the LED light. So when we stick the LED light in, we're all set and ready to go. Slapping on a little bit of wash on everything that's metal, um, the cogs, the door, the handrail, the rungs on the ladder, and uh, we're good to go. Okay, so uh, link above, I'll put it to one of my videos here where, I'm, where I made this resin mixture. Um, but as you can see, the pipe was a little too high here. Um, not an issue. I had enough to kind of cover and go over it. We're going to put some um, caulking over this anyway um, for the water effect. So it still made it, you know, look like it was under the water. But uh, check that link above to see how I mixed the, uh, the resin here. And I got a lot of really good feedback from you guys on how to uh, um, make that glow a little bit more. Uh, so, uh, but I went with the same mixture just to have uh, all my tiles look uniform. And here we're just doing the same rust effect on everything that's metal and a slight little edge highlight um, just to make that door pop a little bit. Okay, now here is the clear caulking that we're using for the water effect. I did the same thing in my sewer tile video. Um, get some in, in the pipe. Don't worry about it being nice and straight lines. We're gonna use a barbecue skewer, as you can see right here, to kind of pull and add the, uh, the effect of water flow. Um, you probably have about five minutes to work with this stuff before it really kind of starts to get hard to work with, um, which is more than enough time to, you know, add the the flow and the little waves that you want. Now I'll put a link above to how to make this little rat. I actually sculpt these out of green stuff. Um, we're gonna stick him right there in the water, have him go for a little swim. And I like to add like a little bit of a V in the water behind him to make it look like, you know, he's swimming uh, through this stuff. And I just grabbed some sticks from the yard. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple of those in the corners. This is a little piece of paper that I soaked in some coffee and then added some Agrax Earthshade uh, wash to, just to make it look like a dirty, you know, towel, rag, a cape. It could be anything that got stuck on this, uh, this pipe here. And while that um, caulking is still, um, hasn't set up yet, we're gonna press that right in a little bit. And you can see how cool it is and fun it is here to add a little splash and wave effects simply by just pulling up on the caulking here. 
It's really stiff and it holds in place real nice. Now this is just a mixture of uh, some flocking, different color flocking and PVA glue, just to add a little bit of moss and, and filth to the sewer tile. Now this was an actual, it was really kind of like a nightmare to be honest. This, uh, I wanted some greenery hanging down from the pipe and the PVA glue um, did not really work well. Um, so for sticking with it, it was like a Woodland Scenics polyfiber. So if you have a better idea of how to make this stuff stick better, uh, leave a comment below and let me know, that'd be awesome. You can see here again, you know, I'm glutton for punishment. I used the same uh, PVA or I think it was like tacky glue or something. Um, and again, it really doesn't hold well. I mean, it holds well, but it just doesn't stick um, and work well when you're putting the piece together. Now, this is just a little bit of Vallejo water texture. Uh, to add some, you know, wet feature to the rat. Um, he looked like he was, you know, way too dry there. I'm going to add this over the, the cloth as well. So my fourth and final video in my sewer series is complete. If you include my rat and slime video, that actually makes five videos in this series. And it seems like just yesterday I was planning out all these different videos for this. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below. Let me know. I've got some other really cool ideas in the future for series as well. Now, next week marks a really cool uh, milestone for me. It's my six month anniversary being here on YouTube since the launch of my channel. And I gotta say, it's unbelievable that I've hit 13,000 subscribers in only six months. Thank you everybody that subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that down below. Also, head on over to my Patreon, check that out. I really appreciate all the support over there. I've got some really cool uh, tiers and the community is great from my Discord chats to my private uh, Facebook page, Tabletop Witchcraft's Coven. So it's a really good time, a lot of good people over there. Head on over there, check it out. And until next time, I'll see you around.